friends, my soul already rejoices I, from the music and just sitting in the second pier and hearing the young children say everything that this young lady just said when she took out the globe, when she took out the cross, and when she took out the dove for the Holy Spirit. They know it. What a blessing. If nothing else comes out of this for me, that's my blessing for the day. They hear the, the kids say it. And let me take a moment of pre personal privilege to say a word about two people. I know I always get in trouble when I start naming folk, but uh, the Holy Spirit tells me I, I've got to do this. I come in and I see Pastor Gene Pillow. When I was a baby bishop, I can't say that anymore, Brother Gene, but when I was a baby bishop, he was on the cabinet. And he would sit there, and when it got kind of tough in the cabinet, he'd perk up with a smile and say something that had us all rolling on the floor. <laughs> but what a gift you were, and, and, and Brother Gene Wade has picked right up. Uh, he's carrying it on. And the other person that I like to mention today is a young man, Miles Davis. I met Miles a while back when I first came. And I know that God is still working in him. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do in and through him. And so, friends, I invite you at this point to hear the word of God. As it comes to us from the gospel according to St. Mark. And I'll be reading chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Hear this word. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. And they watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, for he was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. And the Pharisees went out and immediately began to conspire with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. And this is the word of God for the people of God. And let us pray. And now, God, we simply ask that you would open our hearts and our minds and our souls so that we, your gathered people, might receive your word with thanksgiving and with praise. And as always, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there are so many things that I do not know or understand about Jesus. But I can imagine that the voice of Jesus must have been very expressive. I can imagine the passion in his voice when he called forth Lazarus from the grave with authority and power. And I can imagine the compassion in his voice when he spoke words like, daughter, your faith has made you well, are the words that he said to countless people, go and sin no more. And the eyes of Jesus, they must have been very expressive as they were able to look right through a person and get right to the heart of the matter. And I could see the expression, I could almost see the expression in his eyes as I read the shortest verse in the New Testament, Jesus wept. And I, I can imagine the expression in his face. I can see, imagine the eyes of Jesus dancing as Peter of all people got it right for a change. You remember when Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And it was Peter the one who always appeared to get, stick his foot in his mouth and spoke before he thought about it and leapt before he looked. But I can imagine 
the eyes of Jesus dancing as Peter got it right for a change and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I could see the eyes of Jesus dancing with excitement as Peter again has the audacity to believe in what he sees in the eyes of this wandering, miracle-working, water-walking preacher from Nazareth. And I can imagine Jesus' eyes dancing with excitement as he approaches them on the Sea of Galilee, walking on the water, and it is Peter who says, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. And what joy the eyes of Jesus must have radiated as Peter began so well, if only for a moment, walking on the waves of the Galilean Sea toward his teacher and his leaders. Yes, the voice and the eyes of Jesus must have been expressive of God's power and of God's love. However, for me, the most expressive part of Jesus had to be his hands. You remember that story as we celebrate World Communion Sunday of the two visitors walking on the road to Emmaus and they never recognized Jesus and, and it's getting late in the evening and they say, Master, it's getting late. Why don't you just stay with us for a little while? It's getting late in the evening. In that meal, the hands of Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. I can imagine him picking it up and him breaking it and immediately they remember, they know who it is. I've did not our hearts burn? But they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And all over the world, Christians will remember Jesus, and I hope that they will recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And so to me, Jesus' hands were the most expressive part. Mama always said you could tell a lot about a person by the shoes they wear. Like where they've been and where they go, and so says Forrest Gump. But I believe that you can also tell a lot about a person by watching their hands, what they do with them, how they use them. Jesus' hand were kind hands, doing good to all. Jesus had expressive hands that, that touched the untouchable and healed the wounded and the broken. Jesus' hands were kind hands, and, and somehow in those hands, bread and cup became symbols of, of God's desire to feed and redeem the whole world. Madisonville United Methodist Church. You represent the hands of Jesus. Not just within the walls of this congregation, but throughout the community and the world. You represent the kind hands of Jesus, and, and I hope and I pray that you understand that God has no hands but your hands, no heart but your heart, no lips but your lips. It is my prayer that you will live out God's purpose, doing all that God has assigned your hands to do. And they may be weak, and they may be feeble, and they may be arthritic, but friends, I tell you that in the hands of Jesus, you can use these hands to do great things. And so it is my prayer that you as disciples of Christ will live out the words of the familiar hymn, Take My Life. And let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Madisonville United Methodist Church, May you always remember that as you reach out to help people, young and old, in this and surrounding communities, that they will recognize Jesus through your hands. For in the hands of Jesus, ordinary people 
and ordinary things become filled with the power of God. You know, I would watch my mama. I would watch her hands as she made biscuits for supper and how her thin, slender, brown hands would be covered with flour as she worked the dough. She could take old used cooking lard and flour and make a plat of homemade biscuits appear almost as if magic. But that was not the end of my amazement of what she did with her hands. I had a friend, he was my friend, now I know you're not going to understand this, but he was my friend and my arch enemy at the same time. And his name was Fred. And in the summertime, my mom would cook with the back door open and, and she had this old rickety fan and, and it would blow the scent of what she cooked on Sunday morning out the back door. And almost on cue, Fred would show up at the back door as if he was floating. You've seen those cartoons where a little vapor flow and they start rising up. And I would swear that every time, every Sunday, Fred would make his way to the back door. And I have a brother, his name is Calvin. He's the dad devil of the family. And, and y'all let me take my time. I got to get this story right. But he was the dad devil of the family. And, and we were sitting there at the table. There, there's, there's nine of us sitting at the table in, in front of this big platter of biscuits. And Calvin reaches over and he takes a piece of that bread out and he gives it to Fred. And my sister Sheila was having none of that. And she jumped up and she was going to run to the front of the house and tell Mama that Calvin was giving away our bread. But she didn't pay any attention to the fan that was there and she knocked it over. And she turned around and she made her way back to the table just assured that she was going to get in trouble for knocking the fan over. And all of a sudden, we heard my mama's footsteps coming through the shotgun house that we lived in. And, 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 and my mother got there, and she said, what happened? And Sheila blurts out, Mama Fred, Calvin is giving away our bread to Fred. But by that time, Fred had dropped out of sight and had crawled underneath the porch. <laughs> and so my mama said, is that right? And Fred reappears, and, and he looks at my mom, and she says, Fred, is that right? And I wish I could have warned Fred because there were breadcrumbs all over his mouth <laughs> where he had tried to eat the biscuit in one bite. And when he opened his mouth, the rest of it fell out, and this is what my mama did. She was trying to feed nine children, but she said, Fred, come on and sit down and eat with us. What will you allow the hands of Jesus, the master potter, to make of you? What vessel of love or justice or peace and mercy will your hands shape in this world? You see, it is impossible to be touched by Jesus and not be transformed. It is impossible to come to this table knowing that Jesus Christ pours out his love and shares it with us in the broken bread and the cup and not be changed. There was indeed healing in the touch of Jesus. For in his hands rested the salvation of the world. His hands bore the nail prints that would, allow, that would show how much God loved the world. One of my favorite rhythm and blues songs is sung by Bill Withers. And it reminds me of how expressive our hands can be when he begins to sing about what must have been his grandmother's own hands. And, and I won't sing it to you. People tell me that, Bishop, you need to stick to preaching and not singing. And so I'm not going to sing it to you, but I'm going to share the words with you. And it says, Grandma's hands, clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands, played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands, used to issue out a warning. She said, Billy, don't you run so fast. 
might fall on a piece of glass, might be snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hands soothe the local unwed mothers. Grandma's hands used to ache sometimes and swell. Grandma's hands used to lift the face and tell a baby, Grandma understands that you really love that man. But put yourself in Jesus' hands. Grandma's hands used to hand me pieces of candy. Grandma's hands picked me up each time I fell. Grandma's hands, boy, they really came in handy. She'd say, Maddie, don't you whip that boy. He didn't drop no apple core. What you want to spank him for? But I don't have grandma anymore. But if I get to heaven, I'll look for grandma's hands. You can tell a lot by watching the hands. The story in the third chapter of Mark's gospel begins again. He entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. And I can imagine that this man could think of a lot of things that, that he wanted to do. But his hand was withered. And he couldn't translate his thoughts into deed. The hand represent action and his was withered. But as we gather to worship around the table with all the world, may God guide our hands May the world be able to recognize that we are Christians by our love when we come to the table together and recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the lifting of the cup. Lord, have mercy. We need in this world people who live and work with the hands of Jesus, with the eyes and the heart and the soul of Jesus. The world needs the hands of the world needs the hands of the people of God that they might find rest from the journey. When they are weary, they need hands that they can rest in. When they are burdened with the troubles of the world. When you see on the TV screen about all the disasters that have happened, even in this community in Madisonville, I am so grateful that you have been the hands of Jesus. I saw it when I first came here and know that you had opened up your church and your space for those who had been displaced. What a marvelous example of using the hands of God, allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you and in you. And so as we gather to celebrate the sacraments in this church, May you leave knowing that God has laid his hands on you. Each time you gather around the Lord's table for Holy Communion, it is my prayer that you would reflect on how you have used your own hands. We were in Zimbabwe the first time I was there, 2002, I believe it was. And Bishop Niwatima had just been elected a bishop in Zimbabwe, and we was in his residence. And, and you know, when I think about that and think about the house that I live in now and saw his house, I'm going, Lord, have mercy. And he had just been elected a bishop in a country that was suffering from from all kinds of things, including the children suffering from AIDS. And we were there with Zoe, Zimbabwe Orphans Endeavor, and I remember us asking him, now, Bishop, what are you going to do with your, in your office to alleviate some of this? And he began to tell us the story of Moses. And he says, now, I want you to tell, he wanted us to tell him about that story. And we began to say all these things, you know, I'm, I'm a Duke graduate, and I can say that in here because you got a couple of Duke graduates here, too. But, but I graduated from Duke, and here I am trying to explain to this bishop in Africa the story of Moses, and he just kept saying, no, 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 not that. And he would say, tell me what God asked Moses. And none of us could get it, biblical scholars, and we missed it. And he says, do you remember when God told, asked Moses, what's that in your hand? And the bishop say, I'm going to use what God has placed in my hand. 
That's my prayer for you. God shows us how he's placed the world in his hands through Jesus. We are those hands now. We bear that burden now. We bear the hope of the world. And God nourishes us through bread and cup. What more do we need to take these hands that have been withered and use them to the glory of God? Come on, Madison. Come on, Madison first. Madisonville first. Let's use our hands. Thank God for who you are, but more importantly, whose you are. He's got the whole world in his hands. Why are we afraid to use him? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.